We will be dealing with the iliosacral screw fixation. It was started roughly around 15 years to 20 years back and now it has got various advantages which have been proven which leads to decreased soft tissue dissection, decreased blood loss and less operative time. So the first question which arises is where do we put that? In sacroiliac joint complex unstable dislocations, displaced sacral fractures. In fact, all posterior fracture fixations for the pelvis you can put in an iliosacral screw. So if you have a CT like this or a sacral fracture, this is the correct indication. So look for correct indication and then go for iliosacral screw. Why? Because screw position for both the things will be different. For an SI joint, you will have to put in a screw at an angle from posterior to anterior, whereas for a fracture sacrum, your angle is going to be perpendicular to the fracture line going parallel to the sacral ila. So this is how you will see that. This is for the sacral fracture and this is for the SI joint, which might happen in the same patient and you will have to understand the fracture configuration properly. So correct screw direction for the correct fracture type is essential, otherwise the whole purpose of doing this is lost. What and what we should find out is the CT scan, which is going to give us a normal morphology of the sacrum where our sacral screw is going to go. So next, after looking for the indication, look into the CT scan, which is a must for putting in an iliosacral screw. Why is it so? Because sometimes, rather very often, you are going to have something like this, where your screw direction as well as the placement and the place where you can put in the screw is going to be very less. Might not be possible, and that's what which happens in sacral dysmorphism. In fact, in a series by the, one of the pioneers, Chip Rout, from Seattle, it was nearly 44% had some sacral dysmorphisms. And that's why always beforehand, before putting in the screw, in the CT scan in pre-op planning, look for lumbosacral dysplasias. Look for both the inlet-outlet views as well as the sagittal views to look whether your screw will be able to be put in a proper place and configuration. It's not so easy because you have to understand the structures which are at the risk. If you put in a screw both for sacrum or for the SI joint, you have the L5 nerve roots going above the sacral ala. We know the sacral canal on the back side. The common iliac arteries and the branches into external and internal iliac is just anterior to it. And also the ureter is crossing at the level of ala, both the sides. If you go down, you have the neural foramina for the S1 and the various vessels which are coming and the branches of internal iliac. So it's not an easy thing. You should be aware of the vital structures which are around. So proper surgical technique is an essential part. Technique, you can do it in supine or prone. It depends if it is a fracture sacrum and you have to reduce, it is prone. Otherwise, other things, the dislocations can be done in supine position, especially when you have to take the symphysis as well. Most important thing, Gas shadows should not be there. You have to have a proper bowel preparation beforehand, else your imaging is not going to be there and every gas shadow is going to look like a neural foramina for you. Radiolucent table, ensure that you can get your outlet view properly because it's the outlet view in which the stand goes near the main bump of your operation table and that you may not get a perfect outlet view which is essential out here and look before draping the patient that you can get all these three views together and properly. If you are doing it in supine, elevate the patient slightly up from the operating table because if you are putting in a sacroiliac screw, your angulation is from posterior to anterior and your hand drill may not be, it may not be possible to push it until unless the patient is elevated from the table. Make sure the pelvis is not tilted so that the pelvis and the lower legs are at the same level. This is the most important slide, if I can say. Look at the exact lateral view and where do we place the screw. Once you have to have a perfect lateral view and look for the two sciatic notches and the iliac cortical densities. These are the tangentially placing x-rays going to the sacral layla. Once you have to have them lateral and perfectly aligned to each other. And then only you can start putting in your screw or the guide wires. So here you have a perfect iliac cortical density, sciatic notches, and then only below this iliac cortical density, only your screw is going to go. 
though the sacrum may be entirely a big one. The S1 is going here up to here. But you have to go below the iliac cortical density and your area is nearly 1.5 square centimeter. That's it. So be sure that you have going in the right place, else the vital structures are at risk. Then look at the outlet view. Above the foramina, the outlet view, the neural foramina should look like a perfect circle and it should be above it. And then go and look at the sacral iliac view, inlet view, in which the S1, S2 are overlapping and you, you can see the sacral canal out here and you are parallel to the sacral ilia, depending upon the fracture sacrum or in a say, SI joint going from back to the front. The reduction is done normally by putting in an upper tibial pin in supine position and pulling at an angle of one around 45 degrees because the posterior sag and both the vertical displacements can be corrected with this. Else, put in a shan spin in the iliac crest and then try to pull it out in the same director vector plane of 45 degrees. Malreduction is, has to be avoided. Because if you have a malreduced, your chances of the cross-sectional area decreases nearly by half and more than half if your reduction is not proper. Acute reduction is imperative before you put in this iliosacral screw. A fracture sacrum like this, you reduce it with the shan spin and then you can put in the screws wherever you want to give the stabilization. Screws, cannulated screws, normally put 7.5, partially threaded for the compression part and positional screws for the fracture sacrum. How many screws? Depends on the fracture pattern and how you have fixed it anteriorly. If you have fixed it anteriorly properly, maybe one screw, but ideally two screws are important. In a study, biomechanically it has been proven that two iliosacral screws will give you the stability, both rotational and vertical displacements. So finally, my friends, iliosacral screw is, looks easy, but you have to, it can be easy if you know the proper things which are surrounding it, follow these steps right from preoperatively and during the execution, that is optimal indication, correct screw pathway, look for CT scans, lumbosacral dysplasias, have proper fluoroscopies, accurate reduction, safe surgical techniques, and acute...